Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com and in this video, I wanna share with you the old school way to do a weight and balance. Now trust me, I know our phones can do this. I know the iPad apps that can do this, but I also know on a check ride, your check ride examiner is going to want to see you do it the old fashioned way. He or she has the ability to put their finger on a number and say, how did you come up with this number? and you have to be able to explain it. It's all about showing your work. So with that, let me show you this first slide as we work through our weight and balance. On this slide here, you see the weight and balance form that we're going to use. And if you're a on, current online ground school member of ours, you can access that inside the course in the sidebar underneath checklist. You can find that it's on page two. And we're gonna work through this, follow along with my cursor here. We're gonna work through starting with our basic empty weight and work our way all the way down to our landing weight and calculate really everything in between here. Let's do this calculation now for my 1972 Cessna 172 Lima model. And here's actually a page from the POH of that 172. Now, this is just an example here. Now, this is an actual page. I, I know it's gonna be different from airplane to airplane though. If you're flying a newer airplane, a lot of this work's gonna be done for you ahead of time. You see, back in 1972, they just gave us the basic numbers and we have to do a little bit of interpolation. I'll explain why here. Let's look at the screen here though. We have this sample loading problem here and they give us you know, the empty weight and the moment. This is in thousands, so this would actually be 51,700 is what this would actually be and they kind of calculate it all out down from here. Now we need to start with what's called our basic empty weight and where you get that number from is your actual weight and balance. Remember back to our acronym AERO, of what has to be in the airplane. Airworthiness, registration, owner's manual. The W is what? The W is our weight and balance. And that is the actual weight and balance the mechanic provides to you. You add new avionics, you get the aircraft painted. You're supposed to get a new weight and balance. So it would benefit you greatly next time you're out at the airport to take a picture of it because you can't take it with you. It needs to stay with the airplane. Take a picture of it on your phone so you have that when you're calculating the weight and balance. So I'm going to pre-fill ours in here for you as you can see. We have our weight of 1,364 pounds, our station arm of 37.9. Station arm is really, it's that balance point where everything would balance at our basic empty weight and the moment of 51,696. We now need to find the weight of our pilot and passenger. Let's say I'm 180 pounds, you're 180 pounds. Let's put 360 in there. We've got that weight. Now we need to figure out the arm. And let me show, share with you just a real basic formula real quick. Look at your screen with me here. Remember this and write this down. Weight times arm equals moment. You will use this formula time and time again. You'll use it in the inverse as well to, to calculate arm. You'll have to do some division as well. It's kind of like solving for X. But weight times arm equals moment. So in order to get my moment, I need to figure out the arm for my pilot and passenger. So let's look at this now. Inside of the POH, we're given these loading arrangements. And if you look, it shows the pilot and the passenger seatings with a station CG arm, exactly what we're looking for, of 37. But it offers an asterisk here. It says, pilot or passenger center of gravity on adjustable seats positioned for the average occupant. Remember that our seats adjust forward and backwards based on how tall you are. Look a little bit closer in the graphic. 37 is just the average. It can be as short as 34 and as long as 46 here. So you need to figure out, are you putting your seat in the generally the average position? You'd have to calculate average by looking at the seat rails and seeing where is that midpoint on that seat rail. So let's say I'm six foot four, maybe you're you know, five foot 10. We can average that out and really say, when you put the two together, my seat's back, your seat's more forward. Let's just say for the sake of making our math easy, that we're average. We're right there at 37. We fill in 37 on our arm and now we do this formula here. Weight times arm 
equals our moment. So 360 multiplied by 37 gives us 13,320 as our moment. We've got that calculated, awesome. Let's keep moving forward here. What about the next row, rear passengers? We don't have any rear passengers, it's just a training flight, let's say, so we can put zeros across the board there. What about baggage right here? My flight bag's 10 pounds, your flight bag's 10 pounds, so let's put 20 down like you see there. We have 20 pounds of baggage. Let's go back to our loading arrangements now. And this is a common student pilot error to make. It's so easy to say, okay, this is baggage. So I go to my loading arrangements, I look and go, okay, if I put it in the front of the baggage compartment, it's about a 95. If I put it in the aft section, it's about a 108. But let me ask you this. When is the last time you actually put your flight bag back in the baggage compartment? Chances are, if you're flying in a 172 or a four-seater aircraft, you're taking your flight bag and you're just putting it on the rear seat. That way you still have access to everything in flight, right? Baggage is really just, when I'm traveling somewhere, do I use the baggage compartment? So don't get confused with that. We need to use the rear passenger arm that you see here for our bags, because where are we actually putting that 20 pounds? I'm putting it on the rear seat. So 73 is what I'm going to use. Weight times arm equals moment. 20 times 73 gives me 1,460. I now need to do some addition to calculate my zero fuel weight. Look at the chart here with me again. Anytime you see something bold here, we're adding up to that point. Do you follow me? We're adding up to that point. So zero fuel weight, let's do some addition here. We're gonna add up our weights all the way down to get our zero fuel weight of 1,744. We're then gonna come over here to our moment. Now, I cannot add up an arm. Does that make sense? I can add up my weight, I can add up my moment, but I can, cannot add up my uh, arm over here. So let's add up my moment all the way on down. I get 66,476. I've got my zero fuel weight. How do I get my arm? I need to solve for X. If weight times arm equals my moment, I can divide my moment and my weight to get my arm of 38.12. Now we get to the question of fuel. And the question really is, how much fuel are you going to be flying with? Remember this and write this down in your notes. Avgas, the fuel we fly with, is six pounds per gallon. So let's say I have 20 gallons of fuel on board. I'm gonna do the basic math here. 20 gallons multiplied by six is 120 pounds. So in my fuel weight over here, I'm gonna put 120 pounds. Then I need to find my arm over here, my fuel arm. We do that by going right back to our POH, our pilot's operating handbook, and looking at the loading graph here. We can see for 20 gallons, you see we have pilot and passenger, we have fuel, we have baggage, we have rear passengers. I can follow this up to my fuel at six pounds a gallon, go to 20 gallons and read straight down. And what I get actually is a moment in this case, not an arm, we have to solve for the arm. Well, this goes in two, so each, each line counts as one. So we can kind of go all the way to 10. So this really, if I go straight down, roughly is 6,000 uh, you know, pounds and inches here for our moment. So I can put a 6,000 in my moment there and I have to do the same math. I have to solve for X. I have to do some division to really figure that out and I come out with my arm of 50 here is what I'm solving for. How many times does my 120 go into 6,000? The answer is 50. So I get my arm there. Now I have my fuel arm. That's gonna help me quite a bit. Now, I can add these two up to get my ramp weight. This is another one we do some addition here. I can get my ramp weight by adding up my uh, zero fuel weight with my fuel to get my ramp weight of 1,864. I cannot add up my arms. I then go over to my moment. I add up my moments here 
to get my ramp moment of 72,476. I then solve for x. I do some division. How many times can 1,864 go into 72,476? 38.88 to get my arm in that case. Now we get down to our start, taxi, and run up. Think about it. Are you going to burn fuel on start, on taxi, and your run up? Absolutely you are. And sometimes you're lucky enough to look in a POH, uh, like in the sample loading problem, and they'll just tell you, hey, for start, taxi, and run up, subtract this much. And they give it to you. In our 1972, 172 Lima, that's not the case. They don't give us that information. So we have to just kind of do some interpolation in a way. Let's just say we're going to burn, I've got a real long taxi at the Ocala airport. The run-up area is way down at the end. Oftentimes we're number two or three for departure. So let's say, worst case, I'm going to burn two gallons of fuel making that happen. Two gallons times six is 12 pounds. This now is a negative number. I'm taking 12 pounds away, I'm, I'm consuming it. Does that make sense? Now let's go to our arm. Where am I consuming these 12 pounds from? I'm consuming it from the fuel tanks. So I'm going to use our fuel arm of 50. A negative 12 multiplied by 50 gives us what? Gives us a negative 600. I can now do some subtraction to get my takeoff weight. I'm going to subtract 12 from my ramp weight to get my takeoff weight of 1,852. I can't do anything with my arms. I have to do division, remember. And then I come over to my moment. I can subtract 600 to get my takeoff moment. I then do the division to solve for x here and get my arm, my takeoff arm of 38.81. I can now go over to my center of gravity envelope and see if this works. Here we have our information here. I can go ahead and calculate on through. I can say, okay, uh, 1800 up here. I can go up 1852, so about halfway up. I can proceed on across to my moment, which is down here. Proceed on across to 71,000 and right about here. And we can put our little star down there so we have that for our takeoff configuration here. Now I know I'm operating in the utility category for takeoff. A great spot to be well within the normal category for my center of gravity envelope. Let's uh, finish up our document here. I need to now burn some fuel. We're going on a flight lesson. We're only going to fly for an hour. We burn 10 gallons per hour. 10 times six is 60. I can then come on through and subtract 60, right? Where am I subtracting that 60 from? It's coming from the fuel, so I can use my fuel arm right here. Negative 60 multiplied by 50 gives me another negative number. I'm taking away 3,000 in this case. I then do the last bit of subtraction here. On my, from my takeoff weight with my fuel burn to get my landing weight. I do the same thing over here with my moment to get my landing moment. I do the basic division back to solve for x, my arm here, and get 38.44. I come over to my graph. I've got my numbers up here. 1,792 is my weight, so barely just right here. Coming across to my moment of 68,000. Across, across, somewhere roughly right around here. I go ahead, drop the star, and I get my landing center of gravity also within the utility category. And most importantly, I'm able to see how that is continuing to shift. How does taking weight away, how does burning fuel affect my center of gravity? How would it affect your center of gravity if you have a stopover and drop off a passenger and his or her bags? What does that do to your center of gravity? These are the types of weight and balance questions you're going to see on more advanced written tests, like the commercial. Not so much on private pilot, you'll get the basics like this, but a commercial pilot written, the knowledge test, absolutely you're going to get these types of weight shift related questions. So listen, I hope you guys enjoy this. I know this is a lot. So uh, perhaps uh, take a break, 
find your basic empty weight, and then work through it yourself and work to solve it. So listen, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, the good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. See ya. Pass your check ride or I'll pay for it. Join our number one rated online ground school and participate in live mock check rides and interactive written test prep. Visit groundschoolacademy.com to learn more.